Today I'm talking to you about cholesterol. Um, and one of the things that goes on with cholesterol is there's a lot of, well, let's just say this, there's a lot of myths, maybe miseducation around cholesterol. So I'd like to chat to you about that today. Hopefully the internet's going to work with me today. Um, <clears throat> and first of all, people think cholesterol is bad. It's all bad, 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 bad. You have to take drugs to get it down and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm just going to say, sometimes that's true, but in many cases, most cases, it's not. Uh, radio, Facebook's screaming at me, but anyway, I'm just going to continue on if anyone sees this. And can see me online. Just let me know if you can see it and hear me okay. Um, so, first of all, let's just talk about what cholesterol is, what it's doing in the body, why it's doing what it's doing, and then we'll go further a bit after that about like what you can do, that sort of thing, to reduce cholesterol. If you actually, after hearing this, realise I do need to do something about this. Or in some cases you might hear this and be like, oh, I've been completely worrying about something that's completely not even an issue. So, still screaming at me, Facebook. Anyway, we will see. Um, radio. So, cholesterol's job, it has a job. First of all, it is manufactured in the liver, yes? So, this is an important process, part of the body's function is making cholesterol. You need cholesterol, yeah? Its job is to make hormones. It's, uh, it is like, you know, sex hormones like uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, all of those, progesterone, all those good ones. Um, it's really, really important. So, this is why you need it. It also is essential for making vitamin D. Now, we know that vitamin D is really low in the majority of the population. So not great if you're going to go and take a statin and then block all your cholesterol production, um, then you have problems with the vitamin D. It is also essential for um, conjugating your bile acids. Um, so actually making bile, sorry. So it's part of the whole bile making process, which is what helps you absorb fats and break down fats, but it's also part of the detoxification process. So there's so many parts to this whole cholesterol thing that yeah, just getting a reading of high HDLs or LDLs, usually it's LDLs that the doctors will warn you about, um, isn't, it's not that simple. So when, it, when, you, when you get cholesterol taken, you go to the doctor, they take the bloods, or well, sorry, the, you know, the lab, they take the bloods, the doctor goes, oh, these are high, these are low, you need, you need to take these statins. Now, the thing about cholesterol is there's actually more than just two types of cholesterol. We've all heard about like the good and the bad. The good is HDL and the bad is LDL. Now, within the LDL category, there's actually a whole lot of other types of LDL, like very low lipoproteins, like very low density, or low density is what that stands for, um, lipoproteins. Um, it's, the very, it's the very, very, very small ones that cause more problems, but when you have this blood test done, they're not distinguishing between whether it is um, a very low or just a low, yeah? So it's a bit inaccurate from that perspective. The other thing to know is we know cholesterol has a job to do, right? So everyone's gonna have cholesterol in their body, then we're meant to have cholesterol in our body. Um, the reason it goes high can be genetic. Some people just have more, like higher levels of cholesterol than others. Um, and so what's high for one person isn't necessarily high for another. The other thing, when you're looking at your cholesterol levels and your heart, call it heart health and that sort of thing, is you need to also look at some other measurements as well. It's not just about HDLs and LDLs, which is what the blood test shows you. Yeah, so you've got to look at your tri triglyceride levels. Now, tr triglyceride levels, for some reason it's hard for me to say today, is a really, if they're too high, this is a really strong indicator for heart disease. It's more, in my opinion, it's more important than LDLs and HDLs, yeah? And it comes through having a bad diet, essentially. Stress, um, poor food choices, too much sugar, that sort of thing. Then you've got your lipoprotein, LPA. If that's also really high, then you need to 
have a look at that as well. So these are two other tests that you need to do before you start taking a statin. Um, so the other thing you need to know is that cholesterol is there, it's doing a job. And the reason um, it ends up in the arteries or the veins is because it's going along to patch up the damage that's been caused by oxidative or free radical stress. Yeah, for free radicals or oxidative stress. So if you imagine there's like baddies and they go like toxins, to free oxidative stress is caused by toxins. So think of it like um, chemicals, think of it like stress, think of it like, like too much alcohol, smoking, pollution, um, heavy metals, that sort of stuff. Yeah, all the stuff we know is like processed food, ah, bad fats, that's another one. So bad fats are like your um, canola oil, foods that's been fried, um, margarines, that sort of stuff. Those fats are, are, are bad fats and they actually are bad. They create inflammation in the body. They create oxidative stress, yeah? And when there's oxidative stress is going on, what happens is it goes around and it causes like damage within the arteries and the veins. Now, uh, when this is happening lots and lots and lots, there becomes like little injuries in the arteries and the veins and the cholesterol's job is to come along and patch it up. That's what it does. So. You can see here, just through just explaining this mechanism, it's not the cholesterol's fault, yeah? The, actually, the underlying cause of possibly of high cholesterol is the oxidative stress, the bad lifestyle, the poor lifestyle choices, the poor food, the stress, the not sleeping properly. All of this stuff adds up to equal high cholesterol, yeah? Cholesterol is literally like a, a Band-Aid. It's like, I'm going to come and put a Band-Aid over that cut so that you don't bleed out. Yeah, So that's what the body's doing. It's intelligent. It knows what it's doing. When this happens for many, many years, over and over and over and over again, you get these big build-ups of plaque within the system, within the arteries, and with blood pressure problems and stress and that sort of thing, what can happen is these plaques can fall off, come off, and they get lodged in the valves in the heart or the brain or the lung, and this is when you start to get serious, really bad cardiovascular diseases that turn into life-threatening um, occurrences. So you want to prevent that. How do you prevent that, right? So you prevent that by eating healthy. I've said it about a million times already. Eating healthy, reducing stress, which obviously is a little bit hard to do with all the COVID crazy, um, by reducing toxins in your environment, by getting clean like clean um, products around your house, like cleaning products, um, eco-friendly, natural, get away from perfumes, get away from all that nasty stuff that's not natural, basically. Um, what else do you need to know? You want to keep your sugar low. You want to get away from refined sugar, refined food, processed food, um, bad fats, too much meat. And then what you want to do is increase your sleep quality, increase the vegetables and the fiber and all the good fats. So omega threes is where omega threes come in. Omega threes from fish, but you've got to be careful of the fish quality because we now know that the ocean is very polluted. And because of that, the fish is quite polluted. So you've got to be careful about fish these days. But omega-3s, if you get a really good supplement that's been cleaned and it hasn't been damaged in the process of that cleaning, that can be a good option for you. Or you can go through a plant-based source, like looking for um, like linseed oil or something like that, uh, also known as flaxseed oil. Um, yeah, so hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, what else do you need to know? I think I've covered it all. Yeah, so cholesterol is not so bad. Yeah, it's not as bad as you think it is. It's a completely miss, um, being given like the bad label. Let's just put it that. It's been died. It's like, you're bad, but it's actually not bad. It's got lots and lots of really important jobs to do. What happens is if you have, you, uh, you have high cholesterol and go to a doctor and they put you on statins, what's going to happen? Yeah. So your body's not going to absorb the fats, it's not going to utilize the fats properly, it's not going to make cholesterol. Um, and your body needs fat for all sorts of things, right? Your hormone production will be reduced. You get wrinkly, yeah? Your gallbladder function and liver function may not work as well, yeah? So there's a lot of side effects to the potentially taking these drugs. And the second thing is that... Um, they, we know definitely that statins cause, uh, you need to take CoQ10 if you're on this because it reduces the natural production of that in the body and that CoQ10 is essential for heart function. So if you're reducing fats because you think cholesterol is bad, you're probably doing the wrong thing. 
This is where you get the wrinkly problems and all that sort of stuff. We need fat for good health. Um, if you're reducing fat for weight loss, then you want to think about more reducing saturated fats, not so much your polyunsaturated and your monounsaturated. So saturated fats are things that come from um, animals and yeah, mostly like butter and meat fat and that sort of thing. That's where you're going to get most of it from, but it from coconut. And then you want to keep eating lots of the omegas, yeah, a lot of the good ones like the fish and from the flaxseed and that sort of thing. So you don't want to cut out all fat. In fact, I don't. I never tell anyone to cut out saturated, uh, large amount like uh, all saturated rated fat either. You just want to moderate that. Um, butter's got you know grass fed organic um, butter, also is high in omega three. So. You just have to think of it and understand it a bit more than what you've probably been told. Um, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of simple. The, the simple things about um, preventing like cardiovascular problems from this perspective is eat a natural, healthy, clean diet, non-processed, reduce stress, get rid of chemicals, get rid of toxins. This is the stuff that I honestly say every day, every week, a million times. I've been saying it for the last 12, 13 years. Um, it is really about lifestyle and this leads into the whole diabetes thing as well. This whole like cardiovascular, metabolic, diabetes thing, it's all linked together. Usually you have, when you have one, you have the other um, and this is where you get like the blood sugar problems and that sort of thing with diabetes um, and, in, and the fat that builds around the belly because that's insulin resistance and you usually see this in cardiovascular um, problems as well. So they all kind of come together. Um, but it's all related to your diet. Yes, there are genetic factors that play into it, absolutely, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you know genetics have nothing to do it, but most of it's to do with stress, lifestyle, and eating habits. So I hope that's you found that helpful. Um, if you know anyone who's struggling with this or wants help with this or you're not sure, if they're not sure about what to do, um, yeah, feel free to pass this on or send them, get them to send me a message. Um, I offer 30 minute free consults for people who are interested in working with me. Uh, we can go over what's going on with you, um, what help you need and the plan on how to get you well. So if you're interested in that, you just send me a message. Have a great day guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you this time next week with a new interesting topic. Thank you.